Hey y'all, it's Riley, and uh, I'm back with another episode of The Comic Commuter, the show where I talk comics while I'm on my way to or from work. So this episode was originally going to be about the, um, it was going to be my like third part in my discussion about all the currently going on things or upcoming things over at DC. Um, I was going to talk a little bit, a bit about Vertigo and maybe about the uh, DC Rebirth stuff. But uh, due to recent happenings, this episode is instead going to be focused on the uh, late, great Darwin Cook. Um, at this point, it's just coming out that, uh, that Darwin Cook lost a very private battle that he was having with cancer. Uh, I don't know if it was sometime last night or early this morning, but I, I know that yesterday... Um, the news broke. He, he posted something himself on his blog uh, talking about how he has been fighting cancer and went into palliative care, which means essentially that they tried everything and it didn't work and it was just a matter of time. Um, and apparently that matter of time was not a very long time as uh, I've been seeing it confirmed by various sources that Darwin Cook uh, did pass. So I'm extremely sad about this because Cook was a artist whose work meant a lot to me. His, his style was one that spoke to me because whenever I started to really get into reading modern comics and collecting uh, new stuff, um, his style was something that I, I saw and it just was attractive to my eyes because I was more accustomed to older stuff. I was more accustomed to, you know, Silver and Bronze Age comics, because that's what I grew up reading, um, just from, like, hand-me-downs and all that good stuff. Um, and Darwin does a really amazing job of, uh, of recreating that style. So I remember picking up his, uh, his spirit book, the first book that he did on the spirit, and just seeing that artwork and, and being mesmerized by it. And um, since then, he's always been an artist that I've, I've looked to uh, as just an incredible person in, in the industry whose, whose body of work is just uh, astonishing. And, and he also has a style that's, that's so um, recognizable like there it's unmistakable when you see something by by Darwin Cook you're like that yeah that's that's Cook that's Cook um so I'm I'm really really sad about this and I just wanted to kind of make a video in memoriam of uh of Cook remembering the great work that he's done um you know thinking about his family and and the hardships that they're going through and thinking about his friends uh, everyone in the industry who he was close to, who right now their their hearts are uh, are crying out in memory of uh, of a great person who was taken way too early. Um, and you can go online and you'll see all kinds of people. I think uh, Mark Wade has said stuff. Uh, Bill Sinkevich has said stuff. Um, I believe uh, that Mike Allred has also talked about it, and these were people who were close to him in the industry. And I, unfortunately, I was never able to, to meet him. I never went to a convention that he was at, um, not for lack of trying, just never was able to. Um, but from everyone that I know that has met him, they've said he's one of the most delightful people in the industry. He's extremely nice, extremely kind, and caring, and. Uh, just generally like the, the person where, where you have no qualm about, you know, liking their artwork because you also like them as a person, if that, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm, I'm just really taken aback. And I also, I know that my, my good friend, Colin, um, this was one of his three favorite artists in comics, uh, between Darwin Cook Jeff Lemire and uh, and Frank Quitely, two of which are Canadian, like Colin. And, and and I saw Colin say 
uh, yesterday that, you know, it, uh, it was Darwin Cook that made him think, hey, if this guy from, uh, from Canada can succeed, then maybe someone like me can succeed in comics too. Something basically like that. So Darwin Cook gave him, uh, gave him hope that he could be something in the comics industry. And uh, Colin's a really great guy with a great big imagination that I think he's going to succeed. And I'm, you know, I know that he's going through, uh, he's really, really sad right now because of this passing. And uh, so I just wanted to shout out to you, bud, because I, I know how that feels. And I know, you know, some people might say like, well, you didn't really know this person. It was just a, you know, a celebrity that, you know, you, you never met, you didn't know him, why does it matter so much to you? Um, I saw a quote recently when, when Prince had died, where someone said, uh, I think it was on Twitter, I'm, you know, paraphrasing here, but they basically said, we may have not known them, but they helped us know ourselves, and that's why we cry out whenever, you know, a, a a public person like that, a celebrity or an artist or someone passes because while we may not have had them personally in our lives, like we didn't know them personally, we had their work in our lives and their work meant a lot to us and it made us feel like that person was in our lives. So, you know, I just wanted to say a few words about that, about Darwin Cook, about his work and what his work meant to the industry, and even if you're if you're watching this and you're not familiar with Darwin Cook's work, I guarantee that you've seen it somewhere, and it probably means something to you. Um, you know, he's worked not only on a lot of comics; he's very well known for his DC: The New Frontier series, which was collected somewhat recently in a nice big deluxe edition hardcover. But there's also, excuse me, there's an absolute edition out there as well. Um, he also worked on Catwoman with Ed Brubaker. That was a really big thing that he did. An amazing, amazing run that, that he and Brubaker, along with other creators, did. Um, he's done some work. Uh, he did an issue of X-Force with Peter Milligan, and then he did a, a two-issue miniseries. I believe it's two issues. Uh, Wolverine and Dupe together. Uh, it was a lot of fun did the spirit like I mentioned before he's done a lot of backup features for a lot of different uh, comics with lots of various different characters he did a couple issues of Jonah Hex he's just done so much work he even did some work in the uh, before Watchmen miniseries he, he did the art for the Minutemen one and I think he he wrote Silk Spectre I believe um, but on top of all that if you've never seen or read any of those comics I know that the majority of y'all have seen Batman the Animated Series and Superman the Animated Series where he worked as a storyboard artist, so you've seen something that he did work on, um, and he was good friends with Bruce Timm as well uh, after working on those titles, and, and he also worked on the uh, Men in Black Animated Series that followed the, uh, the movie after that came out. So. Darwin Cook's work is everywhere in the industry, and I guarantee that anyone who's a fan of comics has been a fan of something that he's worked on. Um, so, you know, my thoughts and my prayers go out to his family. Um, I know that they've posted online a couple places where if you want to support his family, uh, you can do so. If you want to donate in his name uh, to various societies, I know there's links to that online. Um, somewhere and there are places that are selling his artwork uh, if you want to buy some original artwork of Darwin's uh, I was looking at a, at a listing yesterday with a lot of different stuff on it unfortunately most of it's already been sold out but there you go anyway I just you know really wanted to make this video um, take a few minutes to remember the amazing body of work of Darwin Cook um, who's just inimitable and irreplaceable and there will never be someone else like him in the industry and I know that everyone will remember him fondly um, and just
is, you know, fuck cancer, 